Hi, I'm Colin Way, and I'll be presenting Bananas, Bayesian Optimization with Neural Architectures for Neural Architecture Search. This is joint work with Willie Neiswanger and Yash Savani. Neural Architecture Search is a very popular area of machine learning, and some have even called it an inevitable next step in machine learning. The reason is because neural architectures are getting increasingly more specialized and complex. For example, the image on the bottom of the slide is DenseNet, which was designed in 2016 to achieve state-of-the-art accuracy on the ImageNet dataset. And as you can see, it's already quite complex. And this trend has only continued in the last four years. So it would take quite a bit of human effort to design something like this for any new data set that we, that we uh, take in. But the goal of NAS is to automate this process of finding the best neural architectures for any given data set. In this work, we present our new NAS algorithm, Bananas. But our main contribution is to conduct a thorough study of a popular framework for NAS, which we call the BO plus Neural Predictor Framework. We identify the main components of this framework, which are the architecture encodings, the neural predictor, uncertainty calibration, acquisition function, and optimization strategy. And we conduct a separate analysis on each component. Only then do we use this analysis to define bananas, which is a high-performing instantiation of this framework. This work focuses on cell-based search spaces, which is the most popular type of search space in NAS research today. And so in a cell-based search space, the actual search happens over a relatively small cell, which is a directed acyclic graph, as in the image on the right. And each node represents uh, one of several operations, such as max pooling or a 3 by 3 convolution. The goal is to find the best operations and DAG structure subject to some constraints on the number of nodes and edges. Then to create the full neural network, we stack several copies of the cell on top of one another. In our experiments, we use three of the most popular cell-based search spaces, NASBench 101, 201, and the DARTS search space. OK. So Bayesian optimization has been very successful in hyperparameter tuning. But up until 2019, there are only a few NAS, algor NAS algorithms that make use of Bayesian optimization. And this is for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that BO typically uses a Gaussian process as the surrogate. But this is hard to scale both in the dimension and in the number of data points. The second reason is that while BO works well for Euclid Euclidean space, NAS searches over complex DAG structures, as we saw in the previous slide. And so the way prior work solved this issue is by hand designing distance functions between neural, neural architectures, although these were a bit hand wavy to set up and challenging to tune. Then in 2019, a few papers proposed a new paradigm all around the same time by replacing the Gaussian process with a neural network. And this alleviates both problems from the previous slide. With a neural network, there are no scalability, scalability issues, and there's also no need to hand design a distance function. We can just pass an encoding of each architecture directly to the neural network as input. So now let me explain this framework a bit more formally. So we start by picking a few architectures uniformly at random from the search space and training them to completion to get their validation accuracy. Then we take these architecture and accuracy pairs, and we train an ensemble of neural networks to, to take in uh, the architecture and predict the validation accuracy. So once we have this neural predictor trained, we generate a set of Canada architectures and then and then predict their performance using our neural predictor. And since we trained an ensemble, we can also get uncertainty estimates for these predictions. Then we take these predictions of accuracy as well as the uncertainty estimates and, and evaluate an acquisition function for all of the candidates. And then we take the candidate which maximizes the acquisition function, and then we train it to completion and start the next iteration. And by far the bottleneck of this whole procedure is the very final step, where we 
where we actually train a neural network. Uh, but this can be easily paralyzed if we just take the top K neural architectures and train all of them in parallel. OK, so there are many choices we need to make when we set up an algorithm like this. We need to choose an acquisition function, an optimization strategy, and also how to encode the architectures, how to, how to calibrate the uncertainties, and what architecture to pick for the neural predictor. So in the next few slides, I'll be talking about all of these components and conducting an analysis on each of these components. And I'll start with the architecture encodings. So as I explained before, the, the architectures are in the form of a DAG-based structure. And most NAS algorithms use the adjacency matrix encoding, where we have, where we have a feature for each edge, as well as a feature for uh, the, the operations on each node. But this is a challenging data structure for neural predictors to interpret. And this is because the features are highly dependent on one another. For example, the feature that represents an edge from the input to the middle one by one convolution has no effect on the final accuracy unless we also have a feature from the one by one convolution to the output. Otherwise, it'll just be a dead end path that uh, doesn't affect the accuracy. And this is the motivation for us to design a new encoding in this work, which we call the path encoding. And the idea here is to have an encoding where each feature is directly correlated with accuracy and is not nearly as dependent on other features. So the definition of the path encoding is very simple. There is one binary feature for all possible paths in the search space. And for any architecture, each feature is set to one if the architecture contains that path. So in this example here, the architecture contains four paths from the input to the output, which are listed on the right. So these four paths are set to one. And as we might imagine, these paths have, uh, have a much more direct correlation with the accuracy. For instance, the presence of a one by one of a, of a path uh, that goes input one by one convolution output might affect the uh, the accuracy of the architecture. OK, so one of the downsides of the path encoding is that it's the uh, size of the path encoding scales exponentially in the number of nodes. So let me explain this a bit more formally by talking in a bit more detail about the path encoding. So as I said, there is exactly one binary feature for all possible paths. So if we look at this example, which is the NAS Bench 101 search space, there are three choices of operations for each node, max pooling, convolution one by one, or convolution three by three. And we can have at most five nodes uh, other than the input and the, the output. So then there are, there's one path of length zero that's just going from the input to the output. Then there are three paths of length one, just uh, input and then any of the three operations and then output. And then et cetera, there are three squared paths of length two, all the way up to three to the fifth paths of length uh, five. OK. So then if we added a sixth node, then, there, then this uh, size would increase exponentially again. However, we, we see this observation where if we try out these architectures that are just these long, skinny paths of length five, they actually get quite bad accuracy. And so they're actually not desirable to find. However, we notice that these long skinny paths make up the majority of, of the features on the path encoding. And so it turns out we show both theoretically and experimentally that we can just top off these uh, final features of the path encoding. So instead of having the path encoding, go up all the way to paths of length five. We only, we only have a feature for all, for all the paths up to length four. And it turns out that this has no effect on the accuracy when we run S. And uh, so, so we both show this experimentally and also theoretically, where so uh, most NASA algorithms have some sort of sample random architecture method. 
And, and these methods, they just sample the features uniformly at random, and they're much more likely to find the type of architecture on the right, which is like a, a very common result for this uh, sample random architecture method. And it's very rare that they'll sample something that's a long skinny path, like, like this uh, architecture in the middle. And this is a this is a desirable behavior because we we see that these long skinny these long skinny architectures uh, do not give good accuracy. Okay, so now we have defined the path encoding and the truncated path encoding. And so now we can run experiments on different neural predictors. So we have we we have three uh, neural predictors defined with different encodings: the adjacency matrix encoding as well as the path encoding and truncated path encoding. And we also compare these to Bayesian neural networks, graph convolutional networks, and variational autoencoders. And so we have a few different experiments here. The two plots on the left are, are uh, evaluating these predictors in standalone experiments. So we just see the ability of these predictors to uh, predict the accuracy of unseen neural architectures both in the mean absolute error and also the uh, uncertainty estimate. And then on the right most plot, we, we uh, evaluate the performance of these predictors when we put them into the Bayesian optimization framework. And what we see across the board is that the path encoding, truncated path encoding, and uh, graph neural networks perform the best. <coughs> OK, so next, I'll talk about our analysis on the other BO parts of this framework. So, so we look at the acquisition function, which is important because this is what handles the exploration versus exploitation part of the search algorithm. And we, we test five different acquisition functions, and we find independent Thompson sampling performs the best, closely tied with expect an improvement and upper confidence bound. And as it turned out, this varying this component had less effect th than if we varied other components in our framework. OK. So now we move to uh, how we optimize this acquisition function. So for example, like how do we generate a set of candidate architectures or, or how to, or more generally, how do we optimize the acquisition function? So we tried a few different things for this. We tried generating uh, a set of candidate architectures randomly, just by randomly sampling many architectures, and evaluate and uh, evaluating the acquisition function for all of them. We also looked at mutating the best architectures from the set of architectures we've already trained so far. And we also tried a few other methods, for instance, local search and evolution. And it turned out that the mutation strategy performed by far the best. And not only that, but small mutations were also better than larger mutations. And so on the one hand, this kind of makes sense because our neural predictor performs the best when the the, the architectures it's predicting are close to the training data. But on the other hand, it's quite interesting because, because this means that our NAS algorithm is not exploring a, lar a large chunk of the search space. It's really just zoning in on small sections of the search space and trying to find minima very quickly in these small parts of the search space. But nevertheless, this is actually a very effective method for having a strong, strong NAS algorithm. OK, so those are our experiments on, on all the different parts of the uh, framework. And we did one final experiment, which is where we, we varied all parts of the framework exhaustively at the same time. So our experiments on the last few slides were a controlled experiment where we only varied one part of the framework at a time. But now we just do a full exhaustive experiment. And our results are the same. We find that the path encoding, independent Thompson sampling, and mutation is the best combination of components. 
Okay, so now we use this analysis to define bananas, where we plug in the best choice for each component. Okay, so now that we have our algorithm, we test it um, against other NAS algorithms on a few different search spaces. So we run exhaustive experiments on NAS Bench 101 as well as darts, and we find that bananas is very competitive on these benchmarks. And we also test it on all three data sets in NAS Bench 201. And we also show that, once again, bananas is very competitive. And subsequent work has also run experiments on bananas. So most notably, a new benchmark came out in 2020 called NAS Bench 301, which is a benchmark on the Dart search space. And they showed that bananas is very competitive on NAS Bench 301. <laughs> and other work also ran bananas in other settings. For example, uh, NAS Bench 101, but with many more queries uh, as, as uh, the budget for these NAS algorithms than what we tried. And there's also subsequent work uh, that gives more more experiments with the uh, different encodings to try. And this work also verified that truncating the path encoding um, still gives strong performance. OK, so in conclusion, the BO plus neural predictor is a very powerful NAS framework. And we studied all components of this framework, the encoding, the surrogate model, acquisition function, and optimization strategy. And then after we conducted this analysis, we created Bananas, which is a high-performing instantiation of the framework. For more information, please come to the poster session or look at our paper or go to our GitHub repository where all the code is listed. All right, thank you.